Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Science of Battlestar Galactica panel here at New York Comic Con. Uh, my name is Patrick DiGesto. I am one of the authors of the book, The Science of Battlestar Galactica. Uh, sitting next to me here is Dr. Kevin Grazier. He was the science advisor for the show Battlestar Galactica. He is the other author of the book as well. We, we tried to get permission to use actual clips from the show, and to make a very long story short, we couldn't. So, we did the Long story short is permission is one thing, being able to afford it is another. <laughs> <laughs> so, we did the next best thing. We are trapped inside an airlock and it is leaking. Uh, yes, and we cannot get the fracking door open. <laughs> to the two crew members trapped in the airlock, we are coming to get you through the front door. Admiral, are you going to dock a spaceship against the outer door of the airlock? No, we are going to open the main door. You will get out that way. Sir, we do not have any space suits. Don't worry. You can survive for several minutes in the vacuum of space. <laughs> On my mark. Three. Two. Do it. <laughs> now, of course, we don't have. Whoops, 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 We don't have the ability to show them actually being blown out. But you remember what it was like when they were blown out and they got pulled into a reactor and. Kevin, would you like to continue? A few things got as much <clears throat> attention as that scene where people got the word Callie and Carol got one off the airlock. And the fact of the matter is, is this has been done, or something similar, exposure to vacuum for years in science in the in science fiction, and done incorrectly. Uh, a lot of people complained, oh, they popped, because either they saw Outland way back when in what, 84? Mm -hmm. no, yeah. yeah. Or they saw, no, or that 78. It was Sean Connery at a low point in his career. Yeah, and, oh, they saw Total Recall with Arnold and Molina's you know, eyes bugging out of their head, and um, that wouldn't happen. Um, also, there's, there's, there's the fact that people saw maybe Sunshine. Remember when the guy is, is blown off the space and, and his, his, his hand is definitely hits the rail and shatters? Because we know all know space is cold. So people said, obviously they freeze. The they, science people blew it on that. They wouldn't freeze either. Here's what would happen. Okay. If you ever noticed, first let's talk about the freezing part. If you ever noticed that room temperature air feels okay, room temperature water is chilly, right? There's a denser, thicker medium in the water that carries away the heat in your hand. It makes it seem cold just because of the rate at which heat gets taken away. In space, there is no medium, there's no air. The same reason sound tra doesn't travel in space is the same reason why it's an insulator. That's why we have double pane windows or triple pane windows. That gap is an insulator. Okay? So space is an insulator. The way heat is transferred is either by conduction, physical contact, convection, which has no meaning here, or radiation. So Tyrrell and Cali would have to be radiating away their heat, and that's a fairly slow process. I mean, Cali, by virtue of her open fate, did eventually become a Cali sickle, but it took thousands of years. It literally took thousands of years for her to achieve the temperature of space. Um, I mean, she got freezing pretty, pretty rapidly, freezing by, you know, the 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius scale. She froze solid in a pretty short order of time, but she, you know, they would have survived that jaunt from the airlock to the Raptor. They wouldn't have frozen. They, they would be pretty much the same temperature when they hit the, the back wall of the Raptor as when they left the airlock. So, so what would I be at this point? A Zarek sickle? What would I be? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I pretty much a Tom sickle. A Tom sickle. A Tom sickle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, they did blow you up the airlock, didn't they? After they, after they shot you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing, you ever watched the, um, the, the, those recaps of the last in like about 10 seconds, you know, but the girl talks really fast. One of my favorite, well, I, I keep laughing at it. I still, when, when Ian and, and uh, AJ got, got executed, I, I like that part where she just, a little wake, a little nod, a little smile, a lot dead. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay, let's talk about the, the uh, popping. Now, <clears throat> Anybody take electronics? Who take electronics? You, 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 you learn about um, parallel resistors, right? And if you have a big honking resistor and a little tiny resistor and, and a circuit, most of the current flows through the little tiny resistor because it's half of the least resistance by definition, but it doesn't all flow through the little resistor. A little trickle will go through the big resistor, right? 
That's how you can approach the human body in this um, circumstance when you blow them up the airlock. Okay? There is air immersed in your blood, in your lungs, that is going to try to expand. Here, uh, at 14.7 pounds per square inch at approximately sea level, that air holds us in. The pressure holds us in. We don't have to worry about popping and expanding. In space, obviously, you don't have that. So that's why people said you would pop. However, if you held your breath, yeah, that's probably the worst thing you could do. But if you were blown out into space, the air is going to take the path of least resistance, and that's out your mouth and nose, which is actually what we did in the plant. We revisited that when we blew Simon out the airlock, or, or when Simon blew himself out the airlock. And you'll notice that there's ice around his um, lips, because as the air comes out, it, it does cool, and the moisture in your breath would freeze. So that's why you see ice around Simon's lips when he's floating in space um, in the plant. But as far as um, if the air come out your mouth, the bulk of it. Now, looking at the big resistor, that's the rest of your body. You know, the air's not gonna pop, pop out your chest, it's gonna go out your mouth, but there is some trap in the little blood vessels, in your eye, in your ear, in your nose, the very tiny capillaries, and that would find a way out through the wall as opposed to all the way out to your lungs. So that said, you would expect some small blood vessels to burst. You expect maybe to get a bloody nose, or maybe their eardrum would pop. Or alternately, blood vessels in their eye would pop. And you notice when you saw Callie in the hyperbaric chamber, she had a burst blood vessel in her eye, and she looks over at the chief when he's got a little hair in there. So that's exactly, that is what would happen. Um, that said, they also get the beds. Um, the compression sickness, the nitrogen that's um, in your blood would come out of suspension, it would boil, and the bends um, is painful, it can be fatal. But one of the things the bends does is it tends to cause a lot of pain in the joints. So therefore, the next day when you see Chief in bed in sick bay, he's getting up really slowly because he hurts like hell. And in fact, Aaron even checked, he said, he, he, he wanted to make sure, he, he did his research and he said, now, shouldn't I be getting up, you know, like I'm really hurting? And he said, yes. So that was what, what you saw is his joints hurt, even, even though he's a superior Cylon physique, he still gets the bends. <laughs> and, um, and Callie was more, more dramatically affected, probably because of her size, being much smaller than Chief, and she was in hyperbaric chamber. That, that was actually completely, that was one of the best things in science that we did because they actually um, honored the science from beginning to end in that scene.